In the heart of the Kalahari Desert, where the sun scorches the earth and water is precious as gold, live people who carry something extraordinary in their blood. Their DNA tells a story that goes back further than any other humans on Earth. 300,000 years of unbroken ancestry. These are the Khoisan people, and they are living libraries of human history. What makes them so special that scientists call them humanity's oldest children? Their story is one of incredible survival, heartbreaking loss, and the fight to preserve the rarest genetic treasure on our planet. Khoisan DNA diverged from all other humans between 200,000 and 300,000 years ago, carrying the L0 lineage that connects every living person to mitochondrial Eve. While other human populations scattered across the globe and mixed with different groups, the Khoisan remained in southern Africa, preserving genetic variants that disappeared everywhere else. 25% of their genetic markers exist in no other human population worldwide, a living repository of humanity's original blueprint. Archaeological evidence from Border Cave and Clazy's River shows continuous occupation spanning over 100,000 years, with sophisticated toolmaking and symbolic art that predate similar developments elsewhere. This genetic isolation wasn't accidental. It was the result of perfect adaptation to their environment, creating extraordinary abilities that seem almost supernatural to modern observers. This unique genetic heritage enabled the Khoisan to develop remarkable cultural innovations, beginning with their distinctive click languages. Khoisan languages employ five distinct click sounds made with different parts of the mouth, a linguistic system that may represent humanity's first form of structured communication. The Zam language alone contained over 40 different words for wind types, each describing specific air movements that revealed weather patterns, animal behavior, and water locations across vast desert territories. These languages encoded survival knowledge accumulated over millennia, techniques for tracking individual animals across enormous distances, methods for locating underground water by reading subtle vegetation changes, and detailed understanding of medicinal plants. Traditional healers developed precise knowledge of plants like hudia for appetite suppression during long hunts and devil's claw for treating arthritis, remedies that pharmaceutical companies later studied and commercialized. Their social systems prevented warfare through sophisticated sharing networks called XRO, where goods circulated among communities separated by hundreds of kilometers, maintaining peaceful relationships across vast territories. But these cultural achievements were built on an even more fundamental foundation, their remarkable physical adaptations to desert life. The Khoisan body represents 300,000 years of evolutionary refinement for survival in Earth's harshest environments. Steatopigia, the ability to store fat in specific body areas, allows survival during extreme famines that would be fatal to most humans, providing energy reserves for extended periods without food. Their epicantic eye folds, found elsewhere only in East Asian populations, protect against intense desert sun and wind while golden brown skin provides optimal protection from UV radiation. Tightly curled peppercorn hair creates an insulating layer that prevents heat buildup while allowing cooling airflow across the scalp. Compact stature minimizes surface area exposed to heat while maximizing efficiency for long distance desert travel and persistence hunting. Enhanced lung capacity and cardiovascular efficiency support sustained physical activity in extreme heat, while specialized sweat glands provide more efficient cooling than other human populations. These adaptations work together with enhanced sensory abilities. Many Khoisan individuals possess extraordinary hearing and vision that allows detection of environmental details completely invisible to other populations. Every aspect of their physiology reflects specialized adaptation to the ancient homeland where these traits first evolved. That homeland was the Makadik Gadi Palio wetland, once a lush oasis twice the size of Lake Victoria, where humanity first established permanent settlements. Computer climate models reveal this region supported vast lakes, woodlands, and grasslands teeming with game between 200,000 and 130,000 years ago. 
When climate shifts gradually dried this ancient paradise, the Khoisan didn't abandon their territory like other human groups. They adapted to the changing conditions. As their homeland transformed into the modern Kalahari Desert, they developed survival techniques that allowed them to thrive where others would perish. Rock art sites across southern Africa document their continuous presence for tens of thousands of years, spreading from the Cape to Namibia while maintaining their distinctive culture. For most of human history, the Khoisan weren't a small desert population. They once numbered in the millions and controlled territories larger than modern Europe. But this ancient dominance would face unprecedented challenges as new peoples arrived with revolutionary technologies and different ways of life. Around 2,000 years ago, the Bantu expansion brought ironworking agricultural peoples south from Central Africa, fundamentally altering the demographic balance of Southern Africa. These farmers could support populations 10 times larger than hunter-gatherers, creating inexorable pressure on traditional Khoisan territories. Archaeological sites like Bambandianalo show the dramatic transition around 1000 CE when Bantu settlements appeared in areas occupied by Khoisan communities for millennia. While genetic evidence reveals extensive intermarriage between the groups, the Khoisan were gradually displaced into increasingly marginal environments where agriculture was impossible. European contact in the 1600s accelerated this displacement into systematic destruction. Dutch colonist Jan van Riebeck's arrival at Cape Town in 1652 marked the beginning of three centuries of intensifying persecution. Smallpox epidemics eliminated approximately 90% of the Cape Khoikhoi population within two generations, while survivors faced systematic land theft through fraudulent treaties and military action. The Khoikhoi Wars, from 1659 to 1677, represented desperate attempts to protect ancestral territories, but ended in complete defeat. This pattern of disease, displacement, and violence would reach its most extreme form under German colonial rule. Between 1904 and 1908, Germany launched what historians recognize as the 20th century's first systematic extermination campaign in Southwest Africa. When Herero chief Samuel Maharero led resistance against land seizures on January 12, 1904, Kaiser Wilhelm II appointed General Lothar von Trotha with orders to crush the rebellion completely. Von Trotha's October 2 Vernichtungsbefehl, extermination order, initiated military campaigns that eliminated over 75,000 Herero and Nama people. German forces drove survivors into the desert and sealed off water sources, while others were confined in concentration camps where medical experiments were conducted. Entire communities vanished so completely that their dialects died with the last speakers, erasing cultural knowledge that had survived hundreds of thousands of years. The German administration collected skulls from victims for university research, remains not returned until 2011, over a century later. Though the Khoisan survived this systematic campaign, they would face one final betrayal in the modern era that completed the destruction of their traditional way of life. In 1961, Botswana created the Central Kalahari Game Reserve, promising to protect both wildlife and the sand people who had lived there for millennia. This arrangement functioned successfully for three decades until diamond deposits were discovered near the reserve boundary in the 1990s. Government policy shifted dramatically as officials declared sand presence incompatible with conservation goals, beginning systematic relocations to settlement camps hundreds of kilometers from ancestral territories. Authorities cut off water supplies, criminalized traditional hunting, and denied children education unless families abandoned the reserve, all while mining operations appeared on former sand lands. The 2006 court victory that ruled these relocations illegal came too late to prevent irreversible cultural damage. Three generations of children had grown up separated from ancestral lands, unable to learn traditional skills from their grandparents. Most tragically, 
elderly knowledge keepers died in government settlements without transmitting their expertise, finally severing the cultural chain that had persisted for hundreds of thousands of years. The scale of this loss becomes clear when examining what disappeared as traditional knowledge systems collapsed. The new language now has fewer than 10 fluent speakers, all over 70 years old. When they die, thousands of years of encoded ecological wisdom dies with them. Desert survival techniques that enabled navigation across apparently featureless terrain using environmental cues invisible to modern technology are being forgotten. Medicinal plant knowledge that could revolutionize healthcare vanishes as healers pass away without successors to preserve their understanding. Astronomical observations recorded in rock art, representing thousands of years of celestial tracking for navigation and seasonal planning, lose their meaning as interpreters disappear. Social cooperation mechanisms that prevented warfare for millennia are abandoned as communities scatter and traditional structures collapse. Each elder's death erases an irreplaceable library of human survival knowledge that took centuries to develop and cannot be reconstructed. Yet even as this cultural knowledge disappears, scientists are discovering that some of humanity's most valuable inheritance from the Khoisan may be preserved in their genes. Khoisan genomes contain genetic variants found nowhere else on Earth that could transform modern medicine. Their DNA includes resistance genes for tuberculosis and malaria that evolved over hundreds of thousands of years of exposure to African diseases. Metabolic adaptations allow efficient processing of plant compounds that would be toxic to other populations, while enhanced sensory variants support the extraordinary tracking abilities that seem almost superhuman. Studies reveal that Khoisan populations metabolize many modern medications differently than other groups, information crucial for safe medical treatment that remains largely unknown to healthcare providers. Despite living in harsh conditions, many Khoisan people maintain remarkable health into advanced ages, suggesting longevity factors that could benefit global medical research. These discoveries represent evolutionary solutions to medical challenges that still affect millions worldwide. But accessing this knowledge requires cooperation with communities that have experienced centuries of exploitation. The challenge facing modern science mirrors the broader Khoisan story. How to preserve and protect irreplaceable knowledge before it vanishes completely. Across South Africa, Botswana and Namibia, land rights battles rage as governments continue displacing Khoisan communities for mining operations and agricultural development. But the Khoisan aren't disappearing quietly. Young activists are racing against time to preserve what remains of their culture, launching digital preservation projects that record click languages before they vanish forever, working with scientists to document traditional medicine and ecological knowledge, and creating educational programs that teach the world why Khoisan heritage matters. Some communities are fighting back by transforming their unique cultural heritage into sustainable income through heritage tourism, showing visitors traditional hunting techniques, medicinal plant knowledge, and survival skills that seem magical to modern eyes. Scientific collaboration between Khoisan communities and researchers is producing breakthroughs that benefit both traditional knowledge preservation and modern medical advancement. But this is a race against extinction, and time is running out. Every day that passes without action is another day closer to losing the world's oldest human culture forever. The question isn't whether the Khoisan deserve to survive. It's whether humanity can afford to lose them. The Khoisan are humanity's genetic time capsules, whose DNA tells the story of where we all came from and whose click languages echo our species' first words. Though their numbers have been reduced from millions to just 100,000, their genetic legacy lives on in hidden ways. Ancient DNA sequences appear in populations across Africa. Their genomes are revolutionizing medical research around the world, and their click sounds have influenced major African languages like Xhosa that are spoken by millions today. They've given humanity its greatest gift, 
the genetic diversity that allowed our species to survive and thrive across the planet for 300,000 years. In honoring the Khoisan, we honor the extraordinary journey that brought all of humanity to where we are today. They are the living bridge between our deepest past and our future, carrying within their genes the solutions to medical mysteries we haven't even discovered yet. If this incredible story of survival and genetic treasure amazed you, wait until you see what we uncover next about ancient populations whose DNA is rewriting the history of entire continents. This was Ancestry Code, and as always, thanks for watching.